Dear students, welcome to the problem solving session on applications of Cauchy residue theorem to evaluate real integrals part 4. At first video, we see the basics and then we framed a 5 step evaluation technique. First one is preliminaries, then substitution, finding poles, residues and finally finding the value of integral over c f of z d z using Cauchy residue theorem and hence we can find the solution for our given problem integral 0 to 2 by f of sin theta comma cos theta d theta in the second video we solved a problem involving cos theta and in the third video we did a problem involves sin theta and then finally we see the general formula for integral over 0 to 2 pi d theta divided by a plus b cos theta or a plus b sin theta is equal to 2 pi by square root of a square minus b square provided a should be greater than mod b. So now we are going to solve a different problem in this session. Like my integrals always need not to be 0 to 2 pi with d theta divided by a plus b cos theta. Sometimes we have problems like integral 0 to 2 pi cos 3 theta divided by pi plus 4 sin theta d theta etc. So now in this session I am going to solve one problem in this pattern. So today we are going to take the problem integral 0 to 2 pi cos 3 theta d theta divided by pi minus 4 cos theta. As usual we start with preliminaries. First z equal to e power i theta and 1 by z is e power minus i theta. By Euler's identity we have e power i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta that is equal to z. So 1 by z is cos theta minus i sin theta. Adding this two equation we get cos theta equal to z square plus 1 by 2z and subtracting this two we get z square minus 1 by 2iz and then for d theta we have dz divided by iz and the region is mod z equal to 1 with center 0 comma 0 radius 1. After this step 1 immediately we have to draw the circle just with simple information that is my center and radius and few points which are and the points on the axis where the circle is passing through. Now we have the information for 0 to 2 pi cos theta and d theta but we don't have any information about cos 3 theta. For this we have to remember z q is nothing but e power i theta all q that is e power i 3 theta. In general z power n is e power i theta whole power n that is e power i n theta. So we can write this z cube as e power i 3 theta that is cos 3 theta plus i psi 3 theta. Now we want cos 3 theta. This is nothing but the real part of z cube and sin 3 theta is the imaginary part of z cube. So we say cos 3 theta is the real part of z cube. In a short form we write rp of z cube. So with all this information now we are going to solve the problem. So I am converting to the complex plane integral over c and cos 3 theta is real part of z cube. In the denominator we have 5 minus 4 cos theta is nothing but z square plus 1 by 2z and d theta is dz by iz. Now rewriting this as real part of integral over c cos 3 theta is z cube and I am taking the iz to the denominator 5 minus 4 and we know cos theta value is z square plus 1 by 2z into dz. Now cancelling this 2 and taking LCM we have RP of integral over C z cube dz divided by iz into pi z minus 2 into z square plus 1 divided by z. Now we can cancel this z with the denominator and then rewriting this as minus 2 z square plus 5 z minus 2. Next to find the poles it is very important I have to rewrite the denominator in a proper way. If I take one minus outside it will become 
2 is at square minus 5 is at plus 2. This will be more convenient for me to find my poles. Now I can take this minus i outside from the integral and we get real part of minus 1 by i integral over c z cube divided by 2 z square minus 5 z plus 2 dz. Now we will take this whole data as f of z. Therefore, capital I is equal to real part of minus 1 by I integral over C f of z dz. Take this as equation 1 where my f of z is z cube divided by 2z square minus 5z plus 2. Step 3. To find the poles, find the poles, we have to equate the denominator to 0. That is 2z square minus 5z plus 2 equal to 0. Let us find a, b, c and then we know the formula and we can apply this and simplifying we get 5 plus r minus 25 minus 16 is 9 that is 5 plus r minus root 9 by 4 which is nothing but 5 plus r minus 3 by 4. So 5 plus 3 by 4 and 5 minus 3 by 4. So we get 8 by 4 comma 2 by 4. That is nothing but 2 comma 1 by 2. Sometimes people directly factorize these terms. That is also okay. Like 2 is at square minus 4 is at minus z plus 2 equal to 0. If you take 2 is at outside, we get z minus 2. If you take minus outside, we get z minus 2. Two. Therefore, 2 z minus 1 into z minus 2 equal to 0. From this we get z equal to 1 by 2 and z equal to 2. This is also okay. Choice is yours. But all the quadratic equations cannot be factorized because we see in example 2 it is a complex number. So, choice is yours. Now, we have two data z equal to 1 by 2 and z equal to 2. Since we draw the diagram initially at the beginning of the problem. Finding the poles is very easy. I am saying again diagram is very important. Without diagram you cannot get the mark and you cannot justify how the pole is whether it is lying inside or outside. So my circle is mod z equal to 1. Therefore obviously 1 by 2 lies inside because 1 by 2 is less than 1. 2 is greater than 1. So z equal to 2 is a simple pole that lies outside C and z equal to 1 by 2 is a simple pole that lies inside C. Step 3 done. And very important note I am telling in all the videos when you write like this you have to multiply the coefficient of z square that is 2 into z minus 1 by 2 into z minus 2. So now let us find the residue. Since z equal to 1 by 2 is a simple pole lies inside C, first we write the formula for residue. R of A is equal to limit z tends to A, z minus A into f of z. This is the case for simple pole. So we have R of 1 by 2. So limit z tends to 1 by 2, z minus 1 by 2 into f of z. And we know f of z is z cube divided by 2 into z minus 2 into z minus 1 by 2. Just now we simplified it. Now we can cancel this 2 and substituting the limits we have 1 by 2 whole cube divided by 2 into 1 by 2 minus 2. So 1 by 8 here taking LCM we have 1 minus 4 by 2. I can cancel this 2 simplifying this we get minus 1 by 8 into 3 because here we have 1 minus 4 that is minus 3. I am taking the minus to the numerator. Therefore, R of 1 by 2 is minus 1 by 24. Next final step we have to apply Cauchy residue theorem. Integral over C f of z dz is 2 pi i into sum of the residues. Here we have only one residue r of 1 by 2. So we get minus pi i by 12. But this is not my final solution. This is the solution for integral over c f of z dz. But my capital I is real part of minus 1 by i integral over c f of z dz. Therefore real part of minus 1 by i into minus pi i by 12. I can cancel this minus as well as i. 
So we get real part of pi by 12. And see here, pi by 12 is real part. It does not have any imaginary part. Or you can think like real part of pi by 12 plus i0. So pi by 12 itself a real part. It does not have any imaginary part. So the answer is pi by 12. Therefore, integral over 0 to 2 pi cos 3 theta divided by pi minus 4 cos theta d theta is equal to pi by 12. I think this one problem is more than enough for you people to solve any kind of problem which you get in the exam point of view. You can easily crack if you have a problem like cos 2 theta divided by pi plus 4 cos theta d theta or integral over 0 to 2 pi sin 3 theta divided by 2 plus sin theta d theta etc. In the case of sin 3 theta, you have to write this as imaginary part of z cube. In the case of cos 2 theta, we have to write this as real part of z square because we have cos 2 theta here and sin 3 theta here. Hope you understand students. With this confidence, you can do the problem easily. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe to our channel and share it to your friends. See you in the next video. Bye bye.